I can't believe it's happening, but it actually is. Today, we get to sign a top five gold player in this game to our squad. It's one of the biggest signings of the season. But what's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Double A Not Scales. Welcome back to the Road for Champions RTG Edition. And I'm not joking when I tell you this card's insane. If I'm being 100% honest with you, I can't believe the things that are about to happen in this episode are so early in this, like, series. Like... Having 198,000 coins this early with the team we already have is monumental and actually wild. And your boy goes to the market and starts to invest. So if you guys don't know how I got there, you missed yesterday's episode. I sold everything in the club, like anything I wasn't using, absolutely anything, I got rid of it. And I made like 70,000 coins from just listing up everything that's in the club that eventually would have just gotten discarded. And that's when I sat down with my homies and we discussed, couple of my pro friends discussed what team, what you know what action I should take in the back line and a lot of them recommended a rojo to me and I already used a rojo in the game as well and I thought to myself a rojo would be a great addition so he's the first player I snatch up right but the next player I knew I was gonna get a rojo but the next player I didn't really know if I was certain about him that's why I hit the homies up like hey how many of y'all have used this card and a few of them said that she was pretty good a pretty awesome midfielder to be honest with you and the only really way that I can actually describe her is the gold Renato Sanchez the girl version of Renato Sanchez she feels outstanding in this game man she can kind of do everything in the middle of the park and she comes in around like 50,000 coins or somewhere around there and trust me, we didn't even make our big signing yet, but I bring in Patti. I think that's how you say her name, Pat Patri. Um, we're going to bring Patri in um, for literally 46,000 coins, and that was a monumental move for the team. But that's when we go out and we get Diaby, a.k.a. the baby, a.k.a. potentially the best gold card in the game outside of Mbappe. And, 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 and instantly people will be like, that's got to be a troll, and that's just got to be for a clickbait title. But I am telling you from the bottom of my heart, this card is the one. This is what my starting 11 looked like. And the only reason I upgraded the team is because I wanted to drop Saliba. So I went and sold everything in my club so I could make the move to finally drop Saliba. Not that Saliba's bad, but I wanted a top tier center back. So Arrojo, aka Arrojo, however the name said, I can't really say my bad. Um, but I bring in... You know, the absolute stud center back that a lot of people call Vinny's dad. Now, personally, I think Vinny's the one, so I'm not going to go with that. But I'm just saying, big boy Arrojo's officially here. So for me to get chemistry on uh, uh, Arrojo and, 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 and uh, Oshalala and all these amazing players, we had to get Patri. Now, with Patri in there, everybody's on full chemistry, and I can finally drop Doku, which I do like Doku, but is he a top-tier player? Ah, is he a top-five player? Ah. But the guy I'm bringing in is a top five gold card. And I'm being 100% honest with you. Pro players around the community are rocking this guy. My big account where I could buy any card I want in the game. Salah, and I got him at right wing. Lads, when I tell you that Diaby is the one, I am not playing around with you, and I'm going to prove it to you. Booyah Nation, before we go any further, can we get 3,000 likes this episode? That would be amazing. Don't forget to subscribe and turn your bell on. All right, let's get back into it. By going into the Division 4 gameplay and showing you the gameplay that's going to take us into Division 3, and after that, we're going to take a step back and go into the Weekend League, the, the qualifiers, where 10-0 or bust. I'm telling you that right now from the bottom of my heart. We have to go 10-0 because it's a 100K pack and a 50K pack if we do go 10-0. We get matched up against Diani. I think I said her name right. Diaby's also in that team. Why? Because Division 4 and up is where a lot of the, you know, the, the, the better players of the game are right now. And like when I say that, I mean like the pro players, the elite players, they're all around that kind of area. Division 4, Division 3, Division 2. Unless you live in the NA, the NA might be like, they might be getting close to the elite now because there's a lot of pros for you guys in Europe. Um, I mean, excuse me, in the, in the EU. Sorry about that. There's a lot of good pros out there. So here in the States, there's not as many pros. So it takes a little bit longer to be able to get matches in Division Three and Division Two. So we head into the week, uh, into the, to rivals, and I'm just going to show you a little bit of what Diaby gets done on the field, right? Like, it's one of those where you pop my man a through ball, and Diaby's going to do Diaby-type things, man. It just is what it is, man. He is an outstanding player. His R1 dribbling is incredible. He got skill moves. He got finishing on him. He has the ability to actually take people on 1v1. And as much as I like Doku, I didn't really feel like the 1v1 take on was that good in Doku, right? I didn't feel like I could get down the wing and really cook up a Hakimi or a Mendy or a Lorente. I didn't 
didn't really feel like I could go one-on-one -on -one with Doku against somebody else. But as you guys can see here, Diaby is actually really cooking it up. And although I could have taken a finesse shot there and got Diaby more stats, that's not what the team's after. It's a team that wants to win. We want to play as a squad. We, won't, we don't care about getting certain player stats. So Diaby lays it off to the one and only big boy, uh, Antoine Griezmann, he finishes. Now, we do give away a penalty here. This is the first time that our back line is going to concede a goal, and it's from a penalty spot, and it is what it is. Now, listen, the team you're looking at, I have one request from you guys. Would you recommend Ali Sun or Ederson in net? Because I could pick up either one of them. I have a, I'm, gonna, I'm, 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 I'm on my way to grind back up to, you know, 30,000, 40,000 coins. Who would you pick up for this team? Big Ali Sun or Big Ederson? I need you guys to get in the comments and let me know. But as you guys can see, man, we're starting to climb the ladder of Division 3. And I'm one game away now. I'm not going to make y'all watch everything to getting into Division 3. And a lot of y'all might say, Scales, did you play the pro ladder? If you guys don't know, there was a pro ladder that went on the other day where if you made Division 4, you could sign up to play the pro scene. I didn't do it because my main focus right now is just to play the RTG and to get the RTG as strong as possible. And lads, I am shocked that my team has Arojo and Varan and Diaby and, 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 and Oshalala and all these amazing cards. But when I tell you, lads, that I have been grinding this game like I've never grinded an RTG, I know you might have watched FIFA 17's RTG and all that stuff, and, and we did bits on those games. But this game, I've never, ever grinded a game where I have no objectives left to do. Left to do. There's no SBCs left to do. There's, there's nothing. Like, usually when I get on RTG, I play drafts, and then I get myself to Division 1 as quickly as possible. But this time, I took my time. I took I did SPCs. I went into squad battles, and I did objectives. I didn't really play for top 200 like I usually do. Instead of playing for top 200 squad battles, I said, how can I play squad battles to get the elite? And at the same time, bang out a bunch of objectives for 50Ks and 100K packs. I did that. I did... I try to use my time wisely, and yes... Because of that, we didn't get top 200 squad battles. But what I did do was turn around and get a bunch of 50K packs, 100K packs, and all the objectives done. So this year, I kind of wanted to move smarter. I wanted to I wanted to work, uh, work not work harder, but work smarter. But at the same time, understand and learn the game as quickly as possible. And I can finally come to you and look at you and say, you know what? I think I understand this game now. I think I'm starting to get it. Like, I really think I'm starting to understand this game. I'm winning almost every draft we go into. I'm cruising through divisions. Um, we're going to play weekend league in a little bit. And that was just absolutely fun. We're going to play some qualifiers. I had a blast in there, but it, it's just one of those things where lads, the team is really, really cooking. Everyone is playing well. Having a Rojo or Roja, I suck with his name. I'm sorry. In the back has just absolutely transformed everything. Yeah. And him and Varan together. Honestly, I just want to be honest with you. I think it's a copy and paste card and they just changed the picture. Arojo and my boy Varan are identical. They're the same card only different like honestly they're just in different leagues they play exactly the same they're both amazing i love them and now we're into division three and i know a lot of y'all be like hey we're gonna are you gonna grind to division two i looked at the reward difference between division three and division two and i felt that that wasn't the smartest thing to do because the rewards are not that much better so i'm just gonna take my time instead and head myself into drafts and into weekend league because if i can win 10 in a row if i can go 10 and 0 here we can get 100k pack and if i can get 100k pack that could be an icon that could be something huge so instead of wasting my time in division two like i said work smarter man not harder man uh instead of wasting my time trying to get division two which i would usually do on an rtg just so i could be like hey look i got top division blah blah blah, whatever it doesn't do nothing for you the rewards are almost the same let me go into rivals and really let me go into weekend league and really spend time um, with everything I've learned through drafts and playing rivals, let me see if if it's paid off in qualifiers, right? Let's see if I've learned the game properly because that's the big test, right? You play rivals over and over and over. You play drafts over and over and over for what? To get yourself ready for the weekend league, right? And rivals is the biggest test, but if rivals prepares you, um, then, then, then weekend league should be easy. I kind of think of it like this, man. I don't know if any of you ever watched Dragon Ball Z, but you know when Goku goes up and he goes to train in that one place and he's training there all by himself for a long time? That's what Rivals is. And then when you go into the weekend league, when it's time to go fight somebody and now you're just ready to go. You get what I'm saying? I don't know if that makes any sense. Anyways, I go into qualifiers to try my brand new starting 11. And, uh, well, all I can really say to you is we're cooking. Now, I win a penalty here that honestly... In my opinion, EA do need to patch this. These penalties and these red cards are a little bit crazy. Um, after playing the game for nearly a week and a half now, almost two weeks, I can say to you, I love this game. I love this game. This is my favorite 
FIFA, it's FC24, but my favorite FIFA since FIFA 17. I can say that to you openly. Now, I'm gonna tell you a few things that I don't like. I don't like that when you, when you make a tackle, the ball bounces around a million times, that's annoying. But at the same time, I do like that defense is very hard because it makes people have to actually play the game. Love that. I love that offensively, you can score skill goals with five-star skillers. You can R1 dribble, you can cross, you can long shot, you can dribble the keeper. There's multiple ways to play this game offensively, which is my favorite is my favorite thing. I don't like when you can only score one way. I don't like when it's run down the wing, cut inside every single time. I like to be able to do a tiki-taka, Travella past the goalie like you saw there. I like to come up the wing sometimes and cut it back, score like that. I like to score off corners. I like to score goals. And the more goals I can score, the more I'm gonna like the game. So there's a lot that's wrong. Red, refs pull for the red card way too much. Penalties get given that are never a penalty. You know what I'm saying? Um, goalies sometimes do really, really dumb things, and sometimes goalies are amazing. Sometimes a five-star weak foot player like Neymar will miss an absolute sitter on his strong foot, which makes no sense. There's a lot of things that are wrong, but there's a lot of things that are really good. So I don't know. Maybe a lot of y'all aren't liking it, but once you actually get the defending down and start to understand the defending, I think you will really, really enjoy this game because the skill gap is huge this year, man. If you can learn how to defend, you're going to win a lot of games because you're going to be able to cook your opponents offensively and then you can defend them and they're just not going to know what to do. But as you can see here, man, I give that ball to Oshalala, R1 dribble inside away from the defender. He committed the wrong way and I was able to put a nice little pass into, uh, uh, to uh, a nice little pass to the back of the net pretty much. And this is what I'm saying about multiple different play styles. You want to run the wing? Do that. You want to go out the side? Do that. Do whatever you want to do. And the best thing about it is when you have Diaby, it becomes a lot easier. I mean, a lot easier. Diaby will change the way you play this game completely. Look at that play right there. Diaby, Oshalala, Oshalala back to Griezmann for the quick one-two pass. Griezmann didn't even control it. Papped it right back in. And just that little action completely opened up my opponent's defense and left me one-on-one -on -one island with a goalkeeper. Easy into the back of the net. It's little things like that that a person has to manually defend. Last year, the AI def defense would have picked that up and covered that for you. Not this year. It ain't working that way this year. This year, you really, really got to do it. And now here, I just run down the wing, do a sweaty, and now we're scoring sweaty goals. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's multiple ways to play this game, and that's why I love it. But really pay attention to how Diaby has transformed this team, man, because when I tell you that Diaby is him, when I tell you that Diaby is no joke, I'm telling you that from a place of Division Three. Weekend league qualifiers, playing with them in drafts. Like, I've played with this guy in every mode. And if he pops up, unless Mbappe's on the screen, I'm choosing him because he is lights out, an amazing player. Look at Aji Buddy into the box and almost got herself a cheeky little goal right there. I was looking for the cutback and it wasn't there. And then right here, man, look at this. Right back here, I'm going to swing it in. Corner in there, back of the net. Ooh, almost in the back of the net. That was our our, our our little midfield, the Spanish girl from Spain. She's cooking. Once again, I'm going to swing it one more time. He doesn't cover it. Antoine Griezmann looking to the back post and all. We almost had that one, but look at the pressure. Look at how my opponent can't get out. Look at the way we're playing. You guys, if you guys don't know, I did drop custom taxes. Four triple two is what I'm running, but you guys can see the 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 quick like bang 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 we're on top of our opponents not letting them play the tiki talk is crazy the skill moves are nice everything is just constantly flowing for us and besides the goalkeeper lads i don't think i'm touching this team for a while i really really enjoy this team um it's just a really really nice team and if we win this game here i believe we go to two and oh or to three and oh and we are cooking in the weekend league qualifiers and i'm gonna be so disappointed lads because i've practiced this game so much that if i don't drop a 10 and oh I'm gonna be sad, a 50K pack and a 100K pack, lads. Like, that's huge. And I know we might not get nothing from it, but I always tell you, create your own luck, right? Create your own luck. Because you, yeah, we might not get nothing out of it, but at least we give ourselves the possibility with a 50K pack and a 100K pack if we can go 10 and 0. Anyways, we're 2 and 0 now with eight more games remaining. And I'm not gonna give you every single game in this episode of qualifiers. I'm not gonna put you through that, but I will have some more of the gameplay tomorrow. And hopefully I can actually drop the full 10 and 0, but we get matched in our third game against my boy Rudiger. This guy is a really nice team. Rudiger Hansen, that girl is crazy. He has an unbelievable skill in the winger. I saw her and I thought to myself, I'm scared. She's gonna barbecue chicken me and here she goes already. And then my boy Varan needs to do something. Can't get there. Varan, 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 Varan. We're all defenses in shambles. Arrojo's in shambles. Everybody's in shambles. But Varan comes and bails me out with a beautiful play. And now watch Diaby go to work. Oshalala stays with it. Diaby's on the run. Let me send him. Diaby going against the defender who's on him. It's the German defender. Diaby, Diaby, Diaby in there. It's, it's strong. 
It's strong. It's the strongest. It's too strong, to be honest with you. Arrojo almost got that interception. But here comes my opponent once again on the offense. Nice play defensively. We clamp it up beautifully, but I clear the ball poorly. That is something you have to be very careful with this game. He has a chance here with the unbelievable Henson, but my boy Kevin De Bruyne doing the best impression of Conte at defensive mid. And once again, with Aji Badi, I give the ball away. Kevin De Bruyne can't intercept this one. He turns it to Conte. He turns back into Conte. Kevin De Bruyne holding onto the ball, looks up the field, finds Aji Badi coming down the way. I know I said her name completely wrong. Cuts inside. Griezmann lay off to Oshalala into the back of the net. And just like that, bang, bang, bang. From getting pressed to breaking out of the press to forcing the rage quit to going 3-0 and to, the, and to us looking like maybe, just maybe, we could drop a 10-0. And trust me, lads, if we drop a 10-0 in the first qualifiers, that will be the biggest thing possible for our RTG. And I'm going to do my absolute best, Booyah Nation, to get it done. Hey, if you guys enjoyed this episode, yeah, smash that thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. Turn your bell on. I appreciate y'all being here. And I will catch you guys back here tomorrow to see if we go 10-0 and if we get something dope out of our 100K pack. But first, we got to go 10-0. Let's not get excited. Thanks for watching. Booyah, we out of here.